Jeremiah chapter 43. The fun continues. And it came to pass. We've been talking about uh, the last few chapters. We've talked about Gedaliah has been sent into the land by Babylon, by the king, to take over the land. There's this man, Ishmael. He kills him. This other man, Jonadab, has tried to warn Gedaliah, but his own little personal thing. He chases uh, Ishmael. They come up to Jeremiah. They seek Jeremiah for prayer, even though they're not going to do what God told them or will tell them to do, as we saw. And it came to pass that when Jeremiah had made an end of speaking unto all the people, and you need to pick up what we read about chapter 42, all the words of the Lord their God. Jeremiah is faithful. He has spoken exactly what God has, has told him to speak. Even though Jeremiah knew from God that they weren't going to listen. And there are going to be people that are going to come up to you, pray for me. Will you pray for me? And they don't mean it. I need guidance. I, I want, and they're not, they're just being pious. They're trying to see if they can get a hallway pass from you. What I mean by a hallway pass is I can get you to, to talk to God for me so I can do my sin. For which the Lord their God has sent him to them, even all these words. Then spake Azariah the son of Hoshiah, and Jonathan, there's our troublemaker, the son of Kariah, whatever his father's name is, and all the proud men. Oh, there we go. There we go. There's pride, which worketh against God. Never can you find God pride. And when there is pride, when there is proud, loftiness, it's always on the side of Satan or man himself. Saying unto Jeremiah, Thou speakest falsely. Chapter 42. Chapter 42, he told him, he says, stay in the land. Wouldn't you think the Jews would love to hear that? I'm going to bless you, I'm going to plant you, you just stay right here. And don't be afraid of the king of Babylon. After the king of Babylon's friend or somebody who he set in the office of rulership has been killed. They fear the king. They fear the army. And Jeremiah tells them exactly opposite what he's been telling them through all the chapters in Jeremiah. He's been telling them, go to Babylon. Go to Babylon. Give up. Surrender yourself. Those that stay in the land, they shall be killed. By sword, by famine, by pestilence. So chapter 42, they get a message from God that they wanted all along. Stay in the land. And you know what? They weren't happy. And they say, Jeremiah spoke falsely. And the Lord our God has not sent thee to say, Go not into Egypt to sojourn there. Now sojourn is, again, it's a kind of funny word because sojourn means that you just you bring your luggage. You don't, you don't bring a U-Haul. You don't pack boxes. You bring a suitcase. You're going to stay over. But God's going to tell them you're going to die there. You ain't coming back to this land. Chapter 42. So notice how the word's being used. These guys plan on going to Egypt and coming back home. Maybe when things cool down, when things get right, when there's peace. And they're not going to come back. But Baruch. The son of Neriah setteth thee on against us. And where did he come up? He's been gone for a while from, from Jeremiah. Last time we read about him, he, he's re reading and preaching to the people with the role that was burned. All of a sudden, he's back in the picture. And he's deceiving Jeremiah. Setteth thee on against us. For to deliver us into the hand of the Chaldeans, that they might put us to death and carry us away captive. Wait a minute. Have you read that verse? Have you really read that verse? Or you just said, I did my three verses for the night. But Baruch the son of Neriah set thee on against us, for to deliver us in the hand of the Chaldeans, that they may put us to death. Right? What's death? 
Well, if you're dead and carry us away to Babylon, captives, wait a minute. You think they're going to bring a bunch of dead corpse? They're going to kill us and they're going to make us captives in Babylon. Make up your mind. They don't even know what they're saying. This guy all of a sudden gets a false accusation. We haven't even seen, but you know, maybe he's there with Jeremiah, but we haven't heard any word recorded by him. And you know what? It's going to get funnier as we go on. So Jehanan, the son of whatever his father's name, and all the captains of the forces, and all the people obeyed not the voice of the Lord to dwell in the land of Judah. That would have been something they wanted. What God finally gives them what they want, they don't listen. You know what that teaches you? Man will rebel against God. You know, if God turned around and said, okay, and I'm just saying this, this way, you know, you can be saved by baptism, you can be saved by works and all that. You know, man would turn around and say, no, the Bible says you will be saved by Jesus Christ and him alone. If you do know in the tribulation period, you've got to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ and by works. You do know that. But you know, Satan's going to come up and say, no, 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 there's no works involved. Pure faith in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's it. You don't need to go to the temple. You watch. I'm not going to watch, but you rebel against God. You'll see. But John Hound, the son of Carrera, I hope we don't have to say this guy's name any longer. And all the captain's forces took all the remnant of Judah that were returned from all nations. They came back after Babylon's come and gone. We read about that. Where they had driven them. And where they've been driven to dwell in the land of Judah. So here are these four people, they run away from the Babylonian army, they come back home, now they're held hostage by their own people. There is just civil war, there is just confusion, there is just mass destruction, there is just chaos. They don't know if they're coming or going. Even the men and the women and the children and the king's daughters. And every person that never can, never, 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 these are, the captain of the guard had left with Gedaliah, the son of Jehoiakim, and those are the poor people of the land, left them to take care of the, you know, the, the uh, trees, take care of the gardens, the vineyards, go ahead and stay in the land. The son of Jehoiakim, the son of Shaphan, and Jeremiah the prophet, and Baruch the son of Right. Wait a minute. Isn't this the guy that was against them? Isn't this the guy that, that wants these guys to be turned over to the, to the hand of Chaldeans who want them to be dead and brought captive to Babylon and they're going to take them, take him with them? Now, they think Jeremiah is a false prophet, right? So what do they do? They bring him with them. So they still want what they believe are false prophets. And they take the they're supposedly their enemy with them. Now you need to see Jeremiah and, and Beirut just sitting there on the camels or whatever, just blinking their eyes at each other like, why are we going with them? We're their enemy, aren't we? Yeah, we are. Why are we going? You see, these guys are so into sin and into the wicked, they don't even know what they're saying and they don't even know what they're doing. You think Jeremiah would just love to stay in the land of Judah? You think he really wants to go to Egypt? He knows God has told him, don't go there. Jeremiah comes back alive. These men don't. So they came into the land of Egypt, for they obeyed not the voice. Notice how he keeps on saying, they obeyed not the voice of the Lord. Thus came they even to Tihaphanes. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah in Tehaphne, saying, The Lord's still speaking to Jeremiah, and he's still speaking to them. Take great stones in thy hand. God likes stones for some reason. And hide them in the clay in the brick kiln, where they burn bricks, they make bricks. Or back in Egypt, when uh, the Jews were down there, slave laboring, so they're still making bricks. They're still building down in Egypt. 
which is at the entry of Pharaoh's house in Tahifni, in the sight of the men of Judah. So Jeremiah is now walking up to the Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Now he's been with the king of Egypt, uh, Judah. Now he's been before the king of Babylon. He's walked up to the Pharaoh, up to his house. He's got rocks in his hands. He's going to hide them in the, uh, the brick kiln. Now, don't you think he's just making a picture here? These people are probably making bricks. They're laboring around it. You know, they're talking about Pharaoh. They're talking about their hieroglyphics and stuff like that. Here comes this Jew, walks up and takes some rocks and puts it in the brick. I mean, don't you think he may expect it himself? And then he turns to the men of Judah that have taken him captive, their enemy. That he didn't want to go in the first place. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will send and take Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, my servant. He will set his throne upon these stones where they've been making bricks. Bricks are man-made items. They're not God-made. You've got mud and all that, but the bricks themselves are not. God made. They're made by man, and God says that Nebuchadnezzar is going to put his throne right where this brick kiln is. That I have hid. Anyway, set his throne upon these stones that I have hid. Jeremiah did an act for God. By, when these prophets did signs and wonders, and you read about them, they did them for God. Jeremiah hid the rocks, but he was told by God to do it. So Jeremiah is stepping in the place of God. And, he's, and he shall spread his royal pavilion over them. Jehanan, Egypt likes to thank you for being conquered, you moron. Egypt is going to have the army come into them, the enemy, and come and destroy them because of Jehanan. Had he stayed in Judah, where God told him to stay, there would have been no army coming into Egypt. But they broke the law, they broke God's word, they're going to go, and they are now in Egypt, and God says, okay, fine. You were afraid of, uh, you were afraid of Babylon? You were afraid of Chaldeans? I'll just send them down to Egypt to come and get you. And when they come and get you, they're not going to take you anywhere. Because you're going to die. Don't worry about captivity. You won't make it. And when he cometh, Babylon, he shall smite the land of Egypt. Haven't I mean, they had enough destruction? And yet Pharaoh is still the God king. They never did get right after all the plagues, after all the events of Moses and Aaron, after all God has shown them, after God has destroyed their nation with signs and wonders and that man could never do, nor the magicians or anything like that, they have not gotten right. The temple's been built. The worship of God has been shown. Uh, and Egypt will not get right. And deliver such as are for death to death. Some are going to die. That they might put us to death. And such are for captivity to captivity. And shall carry us away captive. The men that force these people to go into Egypt will drop dead by the sword. They're going to be stabbed and drop dead. All the innocent people that we read. The men, the women, the daughters and all the people that were in the land. They're going to go captivity. God is going to drive them out of Egypt where they don't belong. And such as for the such and such as are for sword to the sword. War. It's going to be war. Death. And I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt. That's why he said put those stones in the brick kiln. That's where the fire was. Maybe they're making these bricks for their gods. I don't know. 
and he shall burn them and carry them away captives to Egypt. The Egyptians, he shall array himself with the land of Egypt as a shepherd putteth on his garment, and he shall go forth from thence in peace. So Nebuchadnezzar is going to bring peace into Egypt after he destroys their gods, after he destroys these Jews that are not obeying the word. He's got to get rid of idolatry. He's got to get rid of rebellion against the word. Then you'll have peace. He shall break also the images of Beth Shemesh. That is in the land of Egypt. So the gods are still there. And the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. Nebuchadnezzar is going to come in and destroy idolatry. As God's servant. Then later on, he's going to set up his own little image. But then again, later on, he's going to get right with God. So, they come to God with pride. They come to Jeremiah, oh, we pray for us, Jeremiah. They don't want to do what God wants them to do. They got their own little master plan going on. They just want to see if Jeremiah will give approval. Jeremiah speaks to him, stay in the land, you'll be protected. God will bless you. God will make you grow. God will make you prosper. The land will be filled with you again. But if you don't, if you go to Egypt, you're going to die. You're going to have misery. You're going to have pain. When you go there, Babylon's going to come. The one that you're afraid of. The armies that you're afraid of, they're going to come. They're going to kill you. And all those people that you brought down here are going to go away captive. And while Nebuchadnezzar is down there, since he's my servant, he's going to have a little nitwit party with the paddywhack of the icons, the images, the statues, and all the false gods of Egypt. He's going to get rid of them. So Nebuchadnezzar would be coming through Israel again, Judah, because he has a job to do in the Egyptians. But God is using the rebellion of these Jews to say, hey, I know what you're going to do. I got foreknowledge. I told you what not to do. You don't want to listen to me. You're going to go where I told you not to go. So not only am I going to take care of you, but I'm going to take care of the idolatry of Egypt. I might as well kill two birds with one stone. Pardon the pun that Jeremiah had in his hand. And there's going to be fire in Egypt. And they're going to burn. You see what God thinks of idolatry? You think God sees, you see what God thinks of statues? And then you got a church that you belong to to have it? I will kindle a fire in the houses of the gods of Egypt. I, I, you, if you were going to make that a modern version, I will kindle a fire in the churches of the gods of America. I will break also the images of Beth Shemus, the houses of the gods of the Egyptians. Shall he burn with fire? You know, if, if you're going to say you're a Christian nation, I don't think God would approve of you putting the Constitution that every religion has a right to practice their religion. Well, we were persecuted throughout uh, throughout the whole world and Europe and all that. Uh, have you read your Bible? All the apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ were persecuted. And they didn't seek no papers. They didn't run. They just went with the gospel and took where God had them to die, where they were going to die, and how they were going to die. And all the apostles died a violent death but John, and he was boiled in oil or water. I forget which is which. So we want to get away from persecution. We don't want to be uh, made an encore of the government. We don't. We want freedom. We want the ability to vote. And we want the ability to pay and speak about our taxes and all that. And you wonder why all these religions are taking over this country. Are you for burning churches? He shall break also the image of Beth Shemus that is in the land of Egypt. 
and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. I'm not against it, but God is. God is. Those are churches in Egypt where people gather and worship their God. And God says, I'm going to step in there with my man, my military, my servant, and I'm going to burn it. You know what that would leave the Egyptians? Godless, worshipless. You know what makes me a Bible-believing Christian? You know what makes me different from that? You can't burn anything that's my religion. Oh, I'll take your Bible and burn it. Thy words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. You may burn my Bible, but guess what? I've got some of it in my heart. that I. Well, you're going to, the only way you're going to get rid of me in, in the Bible is you're going to have to kill me. You can't build a fire in my front yard and take my gods and burn them in that fire. Sorry. And if you do such things, carry stuff in my house and put it in that fire, I might help you bring some more stuff and put it in that fire. And get some hot dogs and marshmallows. Make it at it. You can't burn my God, but my God will burn you. You can't be a Christian nation and cry foul with, with Muslims rising up and Catholics rising up when you give them a free pass in your country to practice what they're practicing. Why is it that, that our Constitution says we have the freedom of, of, of the ability to speak what we, we, we want to speak, and yet today amongst churches, amongst pastors, that they are they are being charged, especially in Canada, which is not this country, but they are being charged for hate crimes because they're speaking about what people believe. Yet, but we have something called freedom of speech. We're told as as a church, if you want a certain government status, you can't tell the people to vote for. Them. Really, I can name you. I can go through a phone book of five, 500 churches in America that will tell you who to vote for, and they stand up completely to tell you who to vote for. A certain group of people, which I won't mention who they are, Egyptians. And you cry foul that, you know, the, the, blah, 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 you know, we can't say this, we can't. Hey, you allowed them in this country. You allowed them to practice freedom. You allowed them to, gl to grow. You allowed them to build. You allowed them to expand. And now they're taking over. Then you forgot what the Bible says. The church is going to end with apostasy. But what does God have to say about freedom of religion? He shall break also the images of Bethshemus that is in the land of Egypt, and the houses of the gods of the Egyptians shall he burn with fire. What do you think is going to happen to every image, every idol, Everything that is a day to worship before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back, it's all going to be burned. And what is not burned, the Bible says that men are going to cast them in a cave. They're going to cast them into holes of rock. They're going to hand them to the moles. They're going to hand them to the bath because they don't want to be caught with that junk and that crap when Jesus comes. And Psalms has a perfect way to say about this crap, and it's crap. They have eyes they don't see. They have noses they can't smell. They have hands they can't touch. They have mouths they can't speak. They have ears that they cannot hear. And they that make them are just like them. You're deaf, dumb, blind, and stupid. That's the Bible. And these are people who do not want the Word of God. Oh, they came looking for the Word of God, but they didn't want it. And when you rebel against God, you end up with death. There is no life when you rebel against God. Don't you tell me you're going to heaven. You and I have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. Don't you dare tell me you're going to go to paradise if you don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. Don't you dare tell me you're going to be in New Jerusalem when you don't believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. You want me to pack all the other lies? Jesus was a good uh, illustrator. He was a good teacher in the land. No, oh, baptism will save you. You know, all that other junk will not get you to heaven. 
That is defiance. That is against the word of God, just like these men here. Jeremiah preached the truth. They disobeyed, and they're going to die. People we preach to, they're not going to listen. They're going to do it their own way, and they're going to die. There is no life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes shall not perish. What happens to those that do not believe on Jesus? He that has the son has life. He that has not the son shall see the wrath of God abiding upon him. That wrath of God is hell. These images, these idols will get their hell. Right here, the people watching them burn. Better obey what God says. It's very serious. These men did not obey. They died and went to hell. And never got to see their homeland. Never. Never.